The meth business attracts some truly terrible people. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 breaking bad villains. For this list, we're looking at the most sinister, brutal, and evil antagonists that appeared on the show. Uh, 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 Damn, man, look at that, look! Although Walt and Jesse aren't exactly saints, we'll only be focusing on characters that were introduced as villains rather than those who became evil as the series went on. We see you, Walt. Since we'll be talking about villainous storylines and brutal crimes, a spoiler warning and mature content warning is in effect. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10, Tyrus Kitt. After an enforcer named Victor is <clears throat> let go by Gus, Tyrus takes over the position. Yo, you the new guy? Yeah, you got something for me. Like Gus, Tyrus came off as quiet yet intimidating. He excelled at spying on people and could easily sneak up on anyone he wanted. Are you listening to me? Hello? Tyrus also seemed to take pleasure in antagonizing others. Does the laundry have to be dirty? No. Whether he was forcing Walt to hide in dirty laundry, electrocuting people, or preparing a poison needle, Tyrus had a sly smile on his face. While we don't know much about his backstory or ambitions, he was quite unquestionably loyal to Gus. I got eyes on the DEA. Just a visitor. That's why it's fitting that Tyrus's reign of terror ended when he died at Gus's side. Don't punish them. You tell Gus to blame me, not them. He does. Number nine, Lydia Rodart Quayle. When you needed a large distribution network to peddle your meth, you'd turn to Lydia. You want me to kill every man on that list? <laughs> That's a leap. As head of logistics at Madrigal Electromotive, she originally used her legitimate business connections to support Gus's drug empire. But once his empire fell, Lydia brokered an uneasy alliance with Mike, Jesse, and Walt. I gave him a list of names, but instead of handling it, he's protecting them, so I hired someone else. At that point, there was no option but to add Mike to the list. Unlike most Breaking Bad enemies, Lydia was nervous, overly cautious, and couldn't stomach violence. But that doesn't mean she wasn't ruthless. Lydia had no problem throwing her allies under the bus. She ordered a successful hit on her former business associates and tried to do the same to Mike and Walt. Lydia's reliance on underhanded tactics meant her allies could never turn their backs on this businesswoman. You don't think Gus Frank built his distribution network all by himself. Number eight, Domingo Gallardo Molina, also known as Crazy Eight. In the first episode, Jesse tries to partner with Crazy Eight and his cousin Emilio to distribute meth. But that deal falls apart when Emilio accuses Walt and Jesse of being snitches. Are you really cook up that batch? Yeah. You're an artist. It's a damn shame. Wait. Before Crazy Eight can shoot them, Walt fatally poisons Emilio and imprisons Crazy Eight in Jesse's basement. Don't you have a real name? Domingo. His capture let us see a different side of the villain. You from around town here or someplace else? Like Walter, you getting to know me is not going to make it easier for you to kill me. Crazy A presents himself as personable and thoughtful. He even tries to discourage Walt from cooking meth. But this line of work doesn't suit you. But when Crazy A gets a chance at freedom, he drops the nice facade and tries to lash out. Walt is then forced to strangle him with a bike lock. By forcing him to take lives, Crazy Eight helped start Walt's descent into darkness. Number seven, Eladio Vuente, also known as Don Eladio. Cartel leader Eladio Vuente had one of the longest criminal runs on the series. Two decades before Walt even thought about meth, Don Eladio was co-running the Juarez cartel. 
Although the Don seemed cordial and playful, he could turn ruthless at any moment. Yo quiero que me digas una cosa. Si tú eres el cocinero, ¿para qué lo necesito él? Gus learned this the hard way when Eladio ordered Gus's partner Max to be shot during a meeting. This is your new employer. You address him as Don Eladio. It's a term of respect. Hola, joven. While the Don lived a life of luxury across the border, his immense cartel influence made him a constant threat to his American associates. Salud. 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 As untouchable as Eladio seemed, Gus eventually found a way to force the long-running cartel leader into a permanent retirement. Number 6. Jack Welker Shortly after Jack's first appearance, he ordered members of his white supremacist gang to take out 10 imprisoned men for a big payday. That was just the beginning of his savage streak. Sorry, man. Just no scenario where this guy lives. No, 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 listen! Jack threatened the lives of women and children, enslaved Jesse, and fatally shot Hank after Walt begged him not to. But what cemented Jack as a truly despicable person was his nonchalant attitude towards murder. He never shows remorse when he pulls the trigger. Ugh. Hey, remember, I'm still a kid. The only time Jack showed concern about killing someone was when he was worried Walt's blood might mess up his carpet. What do you want it? Oh, gee, I don't know. Anywhere but my living room? Take them out back. While other villains on this list have at least one redeeming quality, we cannot name a single one of Jack's virtues. Number 5. Hector Salamanca Hector Salamanca was once a fearsome enforcer for the Juarez cartel. He was so loyal to his job and family that he'd rather take jail time than rat them out. But Hector was so cruel that he nearly drowned one of his nephews just to make a point. Are they parking me? After years of terrorizing people, Hector suffered a stroke that left him confined to a wheelchair and unable to speak. Although he could only communicate using a bell, he was still a huge threat. Hector prevented Tuco from being poisoned, killed mercilessly, and defied the DEA multiple times. But his most impressive accomplishment was taking Gus down with just one finger. <laughs> Number 4. Todd Alquist If you look up the definition of monster in the dictionary, you'll see Todd's cold eyes staring back at you. Damn, you guys thought of everything. When he first joined Walt's crew, he seemed like a soft-spoken guy who was too eager to impress his boss. But when he shot a young boy to cover up a robbery, we saw how monstrous he could be. You know, at the end of the day, it was him or us, and I chose us. And I would do it again. After convincing his uncle to enslave Jesse, Todd killed Jesse's ex-girlfriend to keep him in line. He also threatened Walt's infant daughter to keep Skylar quiet. You know, I'm gonna need you to say it. Will not say anything about her ever. Through it all, the most infuriating thing about Todd is he frequently apologizes to his victims while hurting them. Just so you know, this isn't personal. <laughs> Needless to say, we were not sorry to see him meet a violent end. Number three, Marco and Lionel Salamanca, also known as the cousins. Wherever these twin brothers go, death is sure to follow. Lionel and Marco Salamanca were a pair of mostly silent assassins for the Juarez cartel. Although the deadly pair mainly operated in Mexico, they journeyed to America to avenge their cousin Tuco's demise. On the way, they killed a literal truckload of people just because they were recognized. Once they arrived, the twins tried to take out Walt before Gus redirected their fury onto Hank. Una gente de la DEA. Pero Bolsa dice que la D está fuera de límites. Al norte de la frontera es mi territorio, mi decir. Fortunately, Hank was able to mortally wound and severely injure Marco and Lionel respectively. No. Muy fácil. 
If it wasn't for Hank and Gus, these twins may have continued to silently take lives with their silver axe and brutal methods. Number 2. Alberto Tuco Salamanca Booyah! Wow! <laughs> the most unpredictable villain of the series was drug distributor Tuco Salamanca. He could go from happily snorting his own product to having a violent outburst faster than you can say tight. Oh, tight, 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 yeah! During one of Tuco's insane mood swings, he beat one of his men to death just for speaking out of turn. <sighs> I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed. After Walt and Jesse try to do business with him, Tuco threatens, assaults, and kidnaps both of them. With a combination of luck and quick thinking, they're able to escape his violent grip. Despite his vicious nature, Tuco genuinely cared about and provided for his family. Seeing as some of that family was in the Juarez cartel, it's easy to see where Tuco inherited his violent streak. We tried to poison you because you're an insane, degenerate piece of filth and you deserve to die. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Gustavo Fring You couldn't tell Gus Fring was a notorious drug kingpin by looking at him, but he prefers it that way. Gentlemen, is everything to your satisfaction? Gus spent years building up a reputation as the charitable founder of Los Pollos Hermanos. Behind the scenes, he was building a drug empire so powerful that his former enemies wanted to work with him. Gus balanced both lives by making such complex moves that even his closest allies couldn't predict what he would do next. If you try to interfere, this becomes a much simpler matter. I will kill you. I will kill your son. I will kill your infant daughter. He also kept a constant air of professionalism whether he was discussing money or murders. And while Gus wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty, he preferred diplomacy over violence. I don't believe fear to be an effective motivator. I want investment. Although his empire eventually crumbled, he was arguably the best person to wear the crown of drug kingpin. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.